Welcome to Disc 2 of College Level English Vocabulary. And we're on uh, Lesson 15. So let's begin, shall we? And, and the first word is permeate. P-E-R-M-E-A-T-E. -E -E. Permeate. And that means to spread or pass into or through every part of something. Uh, for example, as smoke uh, permeates the entire house uh, from the fire in the kitchen. Or it can also mean uh, ideas, uh, permeating a population, revolutionary ideas that uh, causes them to rise up and rebel. Word two, ironic. I R O N I C. Ironic. That means when you expect one thing to happen and the opposite happens, it's ironic. Uh, for example, uh, Charlie had spent the last three days looking for a job and he couldn't find any. So he decides to end the job hunt and he's going to treat himself to a good meal in a restaurant. So he goes in and sits down, starts talking to the guy next to him, tells him his situation. And the fellow sitting next to him offers him a job right on the spot. Isn't that ironic? When he stopped looking for the job, he found one. Word three, millennium. M-I-L-L-E-N-N-I-U-M. -L -L -E millennium. That means a period of 1,000 years. And so in the year 2000, we completed our second millennium, a thousand year period, of recorded time. Word four, inundate. I N U N D A T E. Inundate. That means to be flooded. Uh, it means to be overwhelmed by something. You could be inundated by the number of papers you have to write and turn in uh, within the next two weeks. Uh, also, it means to literally flood. Uh, the uh, uh, waters inundated the town and forced everyone to leave. Word five, munificent, M-U-N-I-F-I-C-E-N-T, munificent. That means generous. Sentence, the munificent boss gave a $250 bonus to each of the employees at Christmas time. Now we arrive at uh, mini quiz time. All set? Here we go. First word, millennium. A period of a thousand years. Next, munificent. means generous. Next, inundate. To be overwhelmed, flooded with too much of something. Next, permeate. to spread throughout something like smoke permeating a burning building. And that concludes Lesson 5. Don't forget, you don't have to give it just one shot. You can go back two, three, four times if you wish. And, and that's fine. No one's going to know. And you'll learn the words. That's what counts to pass the mini quiz, okay?
here we are at lesson 16. All set to go? Great. The first word is abortive. A-B-O-R-T-I-V-E. Abortive. It means unsuccessful. We had to abandon our abortive attempts to reach the area where the plane had crashed. Word two, blandishment. B-L-A-N-D-I-S-H-M-E-N-T. Blandishment. That means flattery, praising a person in order to make him like you so you can get what you want from him. Sentence, despite the salesperson's blandishments, the customer did not buy the expensive car. Word three, compatible. C-O-M-P-A-T-I-B-L-E, compatible. To be able to get along with someone or something without any problems. Sentence, they were compatible neighbors, never quarreling, always having a good time together. Word four, dexterous, D-E-X-T-E-R-O-U-S, dexterous. That means skillful, able to use your body and your hands in a quick and easy manner. Sentence, the magician was so dexterous we couldn't figure out if it was really magic or not. Word five, efficacy. E-F-F-I-C-A-C-Y, efficacy. That means when something works successfully as you intended it to, producing results that were expected. Yes, that is. The efficacy of antibiotics in combating pneumonia has saved millions and millions of lives. And now we go on to the mini quiz. Here we go. Blandishment. Flattery. Uh, praising a person in order to make him like you and then you can get what you want from him. Next. Dexterous. Highly skillful and clever in using your hands and your body. Next, abortive. means unsuccessful. Next, compatible. To be able to get along with someone or something without any problems. Finally, efficacy. It means something that successfully works as it should, producing results that were intended. And it's the end of Lesson 16. Right on. That's from the 70s. You have arrived at Lesson 17. And the first word is factuous. F-A-T-U-O-U-S. Factuous. That means silly, foolish, dumb. Sentence. Norman is much too intelligent to tell such fatuous jokes to us. Nobody laughed. Word two. Imminent. I-M-M 
I N E N T, imminent. Something that's just going to happen very soon. The imminent battle, some the battle is going to come along very soon, will soon decide the success or failure of this war. Word three, jovial. J O V I A L. Jovial. That means happy, merry, good natured, even jolly. Is Santa Claus always jovial or just around Christmas time when everyone pays him a lot of attention? Oh, I'm so jovial. Word four, latent. L-A-T-E-N-T, -E latent. That means hidden away, not yet shown or demonstrated. Example, her latent musical talent was only discovered when she was given a piano for her 16th birthday. Word five, mammoth, M-A-M, M-O-T-H, mammoth, something that's really very large, huge, gigantic. For his hundredth birthday, everyone got together and made up this mammoth birthday cake that actually measured two and a half feet across and two feet high. Can you believe it? It was mammoth. Okay, and now on to the mini quiz. First, imminent. Something that is just about to happen. Next, fatuous. Silly, foolish, stupid. Next, latent. Hidden away, not yet shown or demonstrated. Next, jovial. Happy, merry, jolly. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Uh, thank you, Santa. <laughs> and finally, mammoth. Huge, gigantic, very large. Just how are they going to cut that mammoth birthday cake? And that's the end of Lesson 17. Welcome to Lesson 18. And the first word is mandatory. M-A-N-D-A-T-O-R-Y. Mandatory. That means a rule or law that must be obeyed. And if that law is not obeyed, there are serious consequences. The captain's instructions to the troops were mandatory, and those who did not obey were severely punished. Word two, mesmerize. M-E-S. M-E-R-I-Z-E. 
mesmerize. And that means to be hypnotized, to put under a spell. The incessant constant sound of the railroad car running on the tracks mesmerized him, and he fell into a dreamy state. He was hypnotized. Word three, novice. N-O-V-I-C-E. Novice. A beginner. Someone who's just starting out in some skill. Ted was a novice skater, only having taken it up six months earlier, and he's still pretty shaky on the skates. Word four, obese. O-B-E-S-E. -E. Obese. And that means fat. Too fat. Obese people should begin a diet and exercise program in order to lose weight and get in shape and, and stay healthy. Five. Omnipotent. O M. N I P O T E N T. Omnipotent. All powerful. The king was omnipotent and had the power of life and death over all his subjects. That means the people who lived uh, within the area in which he ruled. And now, on to the mini quiz. Now, this lesson can be repeated, just like as all the lessons, as many times as you want until you get it. Okay? First word. Novice. A beginner. Someone who is just starting out learning a skill. Next. Mandatory. A rule that must be obeyed under the penalty of being tossed out of whatever club you belong. Next, obese. Means fat, too fat. Next, mesmerize. To hypnotize, put somebody under a spell. Next, omnipotent. powerful. If you believe in God, he is described as omnipotent. And that's the end of Lesson 18. Doesn't take much time, does it? And go over it again and again. It don't take a few minutes. Great. And here we are at Lesson 19. And the first word is panacea. P-A-N-A-C-E-A. -A -A. Panacea. That's a cure-all, a remedy for all diseases or problems. It doesn't exist, but you can always hope for one. Antibiotics is as close to a panacea as any other medical discovery. The second would be, uh, it would be great if we had a panacea for crime in the cities, but we haven't discovered or come close to it yet. A cure-all. Two, parsimonious. P-A-R-S-I-M-O-N-I-O-U-S. Parsimonious. 
Not liking to spend money, hating to spend money, stingy, cheap. The young couple would make popcorn at home, and then he would sneak the popcorn into the theater under his coat, uh, so they wouldn't have to pay the expensive price of, of, of theater popcorn. Three, placate. P-L-A-C-A-T-E. Placate. That means to calm someone down, to make peace with someone, uh, make them stop being angry. The teacher tried to placate the angry mother by inviting her to lunch at a uh, really posh restaurant. It didn't work. Word four, precarious. P-R-E-C-A-R-I-O-U-S. That's any situation that, uh, or that's likely to fail, uh, not be successful, or even become very dangerous. The precarious state of peace between the two nations could be destroyed in a minute by uh, someone uh, performing a destructive act. Word five, prolific. P-R-O-L-I-F-I-C, prolific. That means producing a lot of something. Uh, uh, for example, rabbits are prolific in producing their own kind. The uh, example, she was a prolific writer, uh, writing as many as four books a year. And now, the mini quiz. Here we go. Parsimonious. Hating to spend money, stingy, cheap. Panacea. A cure-all. Something that will cure all diseases and all problems. Doesn't exist yet, but you can hope. Next. Placate. To calm someone down, to make them less angry, make peace with them. Next, prolific. Producing a lot of something, like a rabbit is prolific in producing tiny rabbits. Finally, precarious. A situation is very uncertain, most likely it will fail, and could be very dangerous, such as if there's a precarious peace that could be destroyed by just one person acting stupidly. And that's the end of Lesson 19. Welcome to Lesson 20. And our first word is quadruped. Q-U-A-D-R-U-P-E-D. Quadruped. That's any animal that has uh, four legs, four feet. My favorite quadruped is the horse. Two. Recipient. R-E-C-I-P-I-E-N-T. That's one who receives something valuable. Uh, Clint Eastwood would love to be the recipient of the Oscar Award, come Oscar time. Three, reimburse. R-E-I-M-B-U-R-S-E. Reimburse. 
means to pay back what you owe someone. For example, let me know what you spend at the shop, and I will reimburse you uh, when you get back, okay? Four, reminiscence, R-E-M-I-N-I-S-C-E-N-C-E, -E -E. reminiscence. That's a collection of memories. She wrote a book based on the reminiscence of her childhood experiences. Five, retort, R-E-T-O-R-T, -E retort. That's a quick, sharp reply. For example, if someone says you drop dead, and you would reply, what? And look like you? <laughs> that's a retort. Uh, sorry, that's a 1960s retort. And now let's go to our mini quiz. First word is reimburse. It means to pay back what you owe someone. Next, recipient. One who receives something valuable, such as the Golden Globes or NFL most uh, Valuable Player Award. Next, Quadruped. That's a four-legged animal. Next, Reminiscence. That's a collection of memories from your past life. And finally, retort. That's a sharp reply to someone who says something that uh, either angers you or amuses you. And that's the end of lesson 20. You're doing fine. Lesson 21. First word, rubble. R-U-B-B-L-E. Rubble. That means broken pieces and parts of a building that has been destroyed. Uh, example, much of Iraq has been reduced to rubble since the war started. Two, salient, S-A-L-I-E-N-T, salient. Something that's important or outstanding, uh, that's noticeable. One of the salient features of Chicago is the Sears Tower. Three, sedition, S-E-D-I-T-I-O-N, sedition. That means to openly disobey the uh, government that's ruling, resistance to authority on a very uh, wide uh, basis, rebellious. After hearing his speech, many citizens began to think of sedition as a solution uh, to the uh, government problem. For sinuous, S I N U O U S, sinuous, something that curves and twists smoothly like the movements of a snake. I watched the sinuous movements of her head and arms 
as she did her beautiful classic dance. Word five, somber. S-O-M-B-E-R, somber. Feeling sad, depressed. After seeing the somber expression on her face, I knew that she had not received the telephone call she anxiously awaited. Mini quiz. Ready? Salient. Something important, something outstanding. Rubble. The broken pieces of a building that has been leveled to the ground. Sedition. Resistance to authority, disobeying the rules of government, sinuous, Something that curves and twists smoothly, like the movements of a snake. Somber. Very sad and depressed. I hope you're not somber at this very moment because you're acquiring a college-level vocabulary that will last you your entire life, impress all your friends and your teachers. Lesson 22. And the first word is criteria. C-R-I-T-E-R-I-A. Criteria, and that means standards by which something is judged. For example, you want to purchase a car. Uh, you have certain criteria in mind uh, by which you will judge the, uh, the quality of that car. It might be you want uh, rear-wheel drive. No, it would probably be front-wheel drive. And uh, four doors, uh, certain horsepower requirements a color, etc. These are all criteria, standards by which something is judged. Word two, blandish, B-L-A-N-D-I-S-H. That means to flatter, say nice things to someone, to win them over to what you want them to do. Uh, the salesman uh, tried to uh, blandish the customers into buying a car that they couldn't afford. You're a good-looking guy. You look good in that car. Word three. Affront. A-F-F-R-O-N-T. Affront. That's an insult. Charlie was very, very sensitive um, because he was bald, and, and he considered it a, an affront uh, when anybody ever looked at his bald head. Word four, aggrandize. A-G-G-R-A-N-D-I-Z-E. Aggrandize. To increase, to make greater. Uh, 
Sarah tried to aggrandize her reputation amongst her girlfriends by saying she had met uh, a starlet or a, a, a singer like uh, Britney Spears or someone like that. So uh, she would uh, aggrandize her reputation. Word five, dissipate. D-I-S-S-I-P-A-T-E. Dissipate. Has two meanings. First one is to disappear or cause to disappear. The sun finally came out and dissipated the haze, caused the haze or fog to disappear. The second meaning is to waste. Uh, uh, Harry dissipated his fortune on a series of bad investments. That means he wasted a fortune on bad investments. And now we go to the mini quiz. Are you all set? Now you can, if you want, go back over the words that we just gave you at a couple of times before you take the quiz. All right? A front. An affront is an insult. Blandish. To use flattery to get someone to do what you want. Criteria. Standards by which something is judged. Finally, dissipate. It means to disappear. It also means to waste. Okay, that ends uh, lesson 22. You're doing fine. Keep up the good work. Okay?